And Chair recognizes Mr. Leach and moves passage on his amendment. Move adoption. Mr. Speaker, come on, yield. Mr. Dutton. Would Mr. Leach yield for a question? Mr. Leach, do you yield? I do, yes. Do you Thank you. Thank you. Let me, I'm just trying to be sure I understand the amendment. And I keep, because I think some other people have told me one thing and then somebody else told me something else about your amendment and I'm not sure I understand it. But your amendment creates an affirmative defense. Is that true or false? Representative Dutton, I don't believe it creates an affirmative defense. What this is, it's a good question, but I don't believe it does, and here's why. Okay. This is relating to the rules promulgated by the Supreme Court relating to the practice of law in Texas. That's all this is relating right. to. Right. And there's been a lot of debate and disagreement and maybe some misunderstanding about what this amendment does and why it's been filed. This is a shield. It's not a sword. I'll fully admit that to this body. This is not a sword amendment. This is a shield. Against what? I'm about to explain that. It's okay. important for members to understand. There's even some lawyers that don't understand how we get our rules governing the practice of law in Texas. The American Bar Association, which is made up, I think, of nearly 100,000, actually 400,000 lawyers from across the country. It's voluntary. They get together multiple times a year, and they promulgate rules relating to the practice of law all across the United States. And then they send them down to the states and allow the, the various states, in our state, it's via the Supreme Court and the state bar, to promulgate those rules, to decide whether or not to promulgate those rules. This past summer, the American Bar Association adopted Rule 8.4G, which is what we're talking about today. And what has concerned me and other members and why religious liberty experts from across this country have believed that what the American Bar Association has proposed might be on its face unconstitutional. What's concerned me, Chairman Dutton, is this. The chairman of the ABA Standing Committee on Ethics and Professional Responsibility, the chairman called the state's laboratories and essentially has said that they want to use the states to test these promulgated rules. And remember, members, remember lawyers especially, that the American Bar Association is the one that's in charge of accrediting every single law school in the United States. And so in, in our law schools, in most law schools, you're not learning the Texas rules of this disciplinary conduct. What you're rule, learning is the American Bar Association promulgated rules, model rules. And so this is, at its core, a shield. Okay, let me be sure I understand not a how, how, would, how, how would your amendment work in practice? For example, a lawyer is charged with failing to comply with one of the rules uh, promulgated by the state bar, number one. Is that the first thing that would have to happen before your amendment could be invoked? If the Supreme Court or the state bar, in their rulemaking authority, right. what this amendment would do would using the language of the amendment, limit, hinder, disadvantage, or otherwise adversely affect a person's sincerely held religious belief. What we're ensuring is that the Supreme Court and the state bar will not do that. So in practice, whether it be in an affirmative defense, I don't, I don't think it's accurate to say it would be an affirmative defense. Well, what it, it is is a directive. A at all? It's a directive to the state bar that over the next 12 years, right. until the state bar comes up for sunset right. again, it's a directive from this legislature to the state bar that no rule should be adopted which does those things. Right. But if someone, is, someone feels injured by a state bar rule, what would they do? If, if there's an attorney that is, for hence, for whatever reason, directed by the state bar, not that, that, you know, informed that they can no longer practice law in the state of Texas, and they believe that their sincerely held religious beliefs protected by the First Amendment have been violated, then I, I, I don't know the technical. I believe that they could bring a lawsuit against the state bar. Um, I, I don't know. I don't want to tell you an answer and be wrong, Chairman Dutton. Um, I myself why, has never been di disbarred. Yeah, but if, if for instance, an attorney has been disbarred, I believe that they can. And Representative Thompson, if I'm wrong about that, correct me. Um, I believe that they can file suit against the state bar, especially if their constitutional well, rights have I, been that's violated. What I, that's what I'm wondering. I'm trying to figure out whether or not this would show up only insofar as a lawyer who goes through the grievance process, or is this 
something totally outside the grievance process that invites a lawyer to challenge a rule that's promulgated by the Texas Supreme Court affecting lawyers? Yeah, or yeah, is so, it something that is, because that's where the confusion, I think, lies for many of us. Well, no, I, it's a good question. So I think as part of the grievance process, Representative Dutton, if a Texas lawyer feels that they have been disbarred based on uh, their, their practice of the first, their First Amendment rights or their uh, belief that they're practicing a sincerely held religious belief, then they could essentially file, I believe they could file a deck action against the state bar. Um, they could also file a lawsuit against the state bar um, in, in state or federal court. So if in state court, and so that would be the way to challenge for a lawyer to challenge a state bar rule that they believed was applied to them incorrectly because of that lawyer's religious held beliefs. That's right. And so, so it is right to say then it would show up, if not as an affirmative defense, as just a simple defense to having violated one of the state bar rules. That's right. Yes, sir. Okay, that's where I started. And I was trying to figure out, so rule 5.08, which suggests that you cannot engage, a lawyer cannot engage um, in a proceeding um, where he or she chooses um, to do so based on race, religion, sexual orientation, and all of the things listed in 5.08, this would be a way to defend against that if the state bar chose to complain about the lawyer based on having violated that particular rule, section 5.08. The, 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 the Constitution, as has been noted by a number of members here, the Constitution reigns supreme over any rules that have been promulgated by this legislature or think, the state bar no or the Supreme Court. About that. And so at any point, under the current rules, if a lawyer feels like their constitutional rights, specifically their fundamental constitutional rights protected by the First Amendment have been infringed on, then any lawyer, as in any profession, that's whether it's licensed or regulated by the state or not, any, any individual citizen of this country can bring a lawsuit but claiming they can do that, now. that their constitutional rights have been, yes, they can, do, they that can now, do that now. And, right? and that's, what this, that's what this amendment will ensure doesn't happen, but if it does, as a lawyer can do now, they can continue to bring a First Amendment challenge in so state or what, federal court. So what you're doing is trying to tell the Supreme Court not to do it, and if that happens, it also sends a signal to the lawyer who feels aggrieved by it to challenge it based on this amendment, if well, I understand it correctly now. I understand your point, and what this legislature does with, with a number of bills that we pass, maybe hundreds if not thousands of times, is we set forth state policy. Absolutely. We, we pass laws, and we, we tell Texans, and we tell the, the people who are regulating Texans what the law is. This is no different. What, so, we're, assur what we're assuring, and yes, I don't have an anecdote to Representative Chia's, po and Chia's right. point. That's why I say this is a shield and not a sword, is because we're not going to get the opportunity members to review Sunset for the State Board for 12 more years until so the year a lawyer, 2029. So, if a, so if a lawyer is challenged by the State Bar on the basis that his conduct was racially motivated, and that lawyer then challenges that that contention by the state bar that there is some religiously held belief that allows him to do that. Is that the way this amendment would be, would operate in practice? He, he might try, but I think it'd be pretty foolish to do that, Chairman Dutton. Okay. And I, I was, I wasn't trying to be extreme so that, you know, it would create something. But I just wanted to understand. Okay, I, I appreciate Madam your Chairman. questions. I, th I think, and, and in fact, I, I would like for you to move to add those remarks into the journal for legislative intent. <clears throat> or I'll move. 